Mass Effect is, in many ways, everything the RPG genre fails to deliver, rolled into a single title. The story is a fragmented mess of pieces designed to fit in any order. The characters are lifeless contortions of humanoid figures whose personalities are just as cut and paste as the plot. And the gameplay is a very surface level mix of a clunky cover system, a brainless aim and shoot archetype, and a progression system that feels pointless outside of unlocking a new ability that trivializes the threats for a short time. In essence, Mass Effect isn't just a comedy of errors. It's a compilation of cataclysmic failures at a core level. It accomplishes almost nothing that it sets out to do. It provides little intentional entertainment to its players. And the only good parts of the entire game suffer from being included amidst an absolute mess of a product. The formula the developers used to create this game is flawed. And those flaws showed far more prominently, and frequently, than Bioware's good intentions. I like to envision what Mass Effect would have been like as a linear story, with an established order of events not modifiable by the player. The developers could have worked more on a narrative that definitively linked each assignment to your place as a Spectre, your goal of taking down Saren, and your service to the Council and to humanity, rather than all of those elements being selectively important depending on which mission you were on, if they were significant at all. If the order of the story's important events had been more set in stone, the characterization of the game's environments could have been more varied, and the enemies you faced could have been more interesting. Pharos has the Thorian, Noveria has Rachni, but the rest of the game just has Geth. At least with a linear story, the Geth can bring out bigger guns the more missions you do, rather than waiting until you reach the last few levels to dump the super powerful enemies on you all at once. In many ways, this approach could have nullified a lot of the glaring issues I mentioned in the opening of this review thus yielding a more consistently high-quality product. If I could change one thing about Mass Effect, I would cut all of the side content. Not some, not most. All. Every Mako mission. Every Bing Bang shoot 'em up scene. Every dialogue-ridden trek between point A and point B. Every single side mission would be cut. And if time permitted in the development cycle of this alternate universe Mass Effect, I would look into adding some side missions that justified themselves beyond just not being main missions. Side content is only worth having if your main content is consistently high quality. The whole point of side content is to augment your main content. But instead of making sure it serves its purpose, it feels like Bioware just included it so that their marketing team had another buzzword to use. All of the effort, what little there was, that was put into developing side missions really should have been put into making the main story missions the best they could have been. Because by God did they need it. Mass Effect opens aboard the Normandy, the most advanced ship in all of the Alliance, which is basically a unified political and military organization for 90% of the humans in the galaxy. In the game's opening level, a Council Spectre named Nihilus and an Alliance Captain named Anderson introduce themselves as Commander Shepard's superiors on a mission to the human colony of Eden Prime. Nihilus scouts ahead solo while Shepard, accompanied by two of the Normandy soldiers, Caden and Jenkins, take an alternate route towards a beacon, an artifact of an ancient forerunner race known as the Protheans. And the only reason this mission is significant to the story at all. The beacon's your top priority. Along the way, Jenkins dies to some flying saucers with machine gun dicks and gets replaced by a boring Jesus freak named Ashley. Another council specter, Saren, kills Nihilus, thus establishing the story's main antagonist very early on. And the mission ends with Shepard accessing the Prothean beacon and receiving a vision where the Protheans are killed by a machine race known as the Reapers. This whole mission takes about an hour to complete, but only contains a half hour of gameplay, because there's a fucking cutscene every five fucking feet! After the mission on Eden Prime, the Normandy travels to the Citadel, an immense space flower, 
The Citadel is the seat of power for the Council, a trio of political fucks that represent the three most powerful and significant races of the galaxy, Turians, Asari, and Salarians. They're aliens, which means you shouldn't like them. The Council gets upset because one of their agents died and the beacon was destroyed. Saren is accused of treason, but there's not enough evidence to hold a trial, so Ambassador Udina, a comic relief retard more short-sighted and self-absorbed than StarCraft's Alderus, says XD to Captain Anderson and makes a fool of himself in a clunky way to try and paint him as a politician. Pretty stupid, huh, Alderus? You're right, of course. Shepard, Caden, and Ashley have themselves a spin around the Citadel, eventually bumping into Rex, a Krogan bounty hunter who's after a slumlord known as Fist. He says, This story is just beginning. Then he leaves. Fist is vaguely important to the story, since he's betrayed some dumb idiot known as the Shadow Broker, a really powerful information dealer, and has allied himself with Saren. Turns out there's a Quarian another alien species, that has information that proves Saren is a traitor to the Council. Obviously, Saren doesn't want that getting out, so Fist is ordered to orchestrate her death. Shepard and company figure out that the Quarian was last seen at a medical center, so they go there, only to find Garrus, a Turian, in a standoff with some of Fist's thugs, who have taken a doctor hostage. After dispatching the thugs, you find out that the doctor treated the Quarian, and Garrus joins your squad since he hates Saren for no reason. Then you go to Citadel Security and recruit Rex, who joins you just to kill Fist, but sticks around afterwards for some reason. So you raid the club Fist it runs, interrogate Fist, kill Fist, and go to some alleyway nearby to kill the assassins that are trying to kill the Quarian. And then she joins you after sharing her information- Do I really have to do this for every fucking level in the game? Tally, the Quarian, provides you with evidence necessary to prove that Saren is a traitor. This also implicates an Asari matriarch named Benezia who has apparently joined Saren in his quest to bring back the Reapers. Then Tali joins you. The Council accepts that Saren is now a traitor and promotes Shepard to the rank of Spectre, with the understanding that Shepard will tirelessly pursue Saren until he is brought to justice. Captain Anderson retires and gives you command of the Normandy, and all your allies, human and alien alike, get on board and join you in your quest against Saren. Why are they willing to put their lives at risk to stop someone they barely know? Who cares? Then you get to play Mass Effect Wings of Liberty, where you pick and choose which story mission you want to do next. For the sake of the review, I'll just reference my playthrough. On Pharos, the Geth raid another human colony, and the Alliance does nothing to help them for some reason. Shepard and some crew members have another spin, talk to the natives, fight some Geth, get into a Mako, why is this here? Fight some more Geth, fight even more Geth, find out that some woman's daughter is stuck inside the building they're heading to, fight MORE FUCKING GEF! Shoot some dogs, talk to some bitch who's also the daughter of that other bitch, fight a Krogan, fight a computer- uh, I mean, talk to a computer, fight MORE GEF! Play a minigame about PSI, make an omelette, find out there's a mind control plant somewhere on the planet, kidnap that idiot daughter, give her back to her mother, shoot some moron, get some anti-toxin grenades, throw them at some mongols that have been mind controlled, watch a scene from Deadly Premonition, go spelunking in another man's anus, shoot some Asari, shoot some retards that have a spew at you, shoot the Thorian's overmind tendrils, shoot yourself because this is taking too long to recap, and eventually save the colony. With bullets! Then the Asari that was being cloned by the Thorian expositions you into another dimension with her mind giving you a mental translator that comes in handy later, and explains that Saren wanted to study the Thorian's mind control properties. Or something. On Noveria, you FUCK THIS PLANET AND ITS LACK OF SAVES! You point your gun at some cop morons, talk to an assistant moron, talk to a Salarian moron, and discover that the Benezia moron is on the planet. But you can't just go after her, you have to get a garage pass. The assistant moron tells you to talk to some Turian moron, He'll help you once you stop some cop-turned-mercenary morons from moroning all over this moron's office. Because this moron has moronic information that implicates the Salarian moron in some crimes that would get him thrown in moron jail. So after killing some cop morons in the Turian moron's office and collecting his moronic data, the assistant moron reveals that she's actually an undercover moron sent here to throw the Salarian moron into moron jail. So you persuade the Turian moron to testify against the Salarian moron in moron court, and the undercover moron gives you a garage pass. That wasn't convoluted at all, was it? Now you finally have the garage pass. You fight some Geth. Get into a Mako. Why is this here? Fight some more Geth. Fight a lot more Geth. Fight Geth turrets. Fight some Zerg, including Butter. Fight some soldiers? I think this was an accident. Then eventually you fight Benezia, her Geth, 
and her Asari, and she reveals that she's been mind-controlled by Saren and was attempting to free the Zerg for some reason. Then she dies, and you talk to Overqueen Zagara and choose between exterminating the Zerg a la Amon or letting them live. I'm not much of a Void guy, so I let them live. In the Artemis Tau Cluster, you find some Prothean ruins that Benezia's daughter, Liara, had been excavating. You land on the planet in the Mako, at least it makes sense this time. Fight some Geth, fight a lot of Geth, fight a Geth base, which is really just some turrets and some more Geth, and keep fighting Geth in the Mako until some Browders stop you from moving forward. So you get out of the Mako and fight some Geth on foot until you finally reach the Prothean Ruins, where you can fight more Geth! Yay! Eventually, you find Liara, who hallucinates herself into another dimension via dialogue. You fight some more Geth and use a laser drill to kill Browder and free Liara. Then some more Geths show up with a Krogan Moron leading them. And then a Shepherd Moron tells the Krogan Moron to go fuck himself so they can save their Asari Moron. I'm not doing this again. Shepherd and friends kill the Krogan and the Geth and the Normandy swoops in and saves the day. On Vermeer, you arrive in an attempt to investigate the disappearance of a Salarian Special Ops Squad that was sent there on Council Business. The mission starts out with you and the Mako, and you fight Geth. I think we all know where this goes. After fighting Geth forever, you arrive at the base camp of the Salarians. The fact that they're actually alive was a bit of a surprise to me, honestly. I just assumed they'd be dead and we'd have to finish their mission for them. It's revealed that Saren is researching a cure for the Genophage, a disease that makes most Krogan children die in childbirth. The whole reason this exists is because the Krogan were practically unstoppable for a good while thanks to their brute strength, so the Salarians designed the Genophage to stop them from having the numbers required to rule the galaxy. It paints the Krogan a bit like the Krahan Empire from Imperium Galactica 2, which I have fond memories of, despite the game probably not being very good. Anyways, Rex finds out that Saren is planning to cure his species of the Genophage, and even though it's very obvious that he's only doing so to create an army of loyal Krogan to augment his Geth, Rex is seriously considering joining Saren's war effort in support of this. Shepard talks him down, but if you don't have enough Paragon or Renegade points, you can't do this, and Ashley shoots him in the fucking face, because your choices matter. Then the Salarian captain tells you that his team are going to convert their ship's reactor core into a NUCLEAR PAYLOAD! And you send one of your human crew members with the Salarians to help assault Saren's base while you... Well, besides fighting Geth and Krogan, I really don't know what the fuck you're doing. I guess you're infiltrating the compound to shut down the genophage cure? Let's go with that, because honestly I forget. This mission concludes with you finding out that Sovereign, Saren's ship, is a Reaper. Sovereign's reveal is fucking awesome. Their dialogue is well-written, and their voice editing makes them seem genuinely imposing and unknowable. Their presence is actually intimidating. I don't know what would have happened if this reveal had happened earlier in the story and Sovereign had ascended as the primary antagonist of Mass Effect. But the game would have had more moments like this. We are eternal, the pinnacle of evolution and existence. Before us, you are nothing. Your extinction is inevitable. We are the end of everything. And that would have been alright with me. Unfortunately, every line of dialogue in this scene not delivered by Sovereign cheapens this moment. It feels like you're eating a shit omelette, and you finally bite into something that tastes like actual food. Good food, even. And are just perpetually reminded that you've been eating shit this whole time, and that you will continue to eat shit after this. Afterwards, you fight some more Geth and Krogan, sacrifice one of your squad members in a scene that doesn't really have significance because these characters don't feel fleshed out, and fight Saren. Saren's entrance into this area is actually pretty cool, but it's followed up with... talking. Why? Because of the plot, that's why! After the mission on Vermeer, the surviving human crew member mourns the dead one, Shepard yells at them, and Liara has mind sex with Shepard in front of everyone because she's an exhibitionist. I think this is also important to the plot because of exposition, but... During the mind sex, Liara somehow divines that the Conduit, a device that Saren has been after the entire game, is on an old Prothean planet called Ilos. You travel there after some nonsense on the Citadel, have censored fraud sex with Liara, watch a fan film, drop down in the Mako, get out of the Mako, fight some Geth, fight more Geth, fight all the Geth in the entire fucking universe, and eventually activate a computer virus named Vigil. The virus info dumps basically every fucking thing about the Prothean civilization in a conversation that takes five hours, and then tells you that the Conduit is a mini-mass relay that will teleport you directly to the Citadel. Also, it's closing in about two minutes. So you bumble into some Geth, travel along the mass relay, watch ten cutscenes, chase Saren, get Saren to reenact a deadly premonition cutscene, 
because that's what we want out of all of our antagonists. Right? And stop Sovereign from warping the rest of the Reapers to the Citadel. A crew member shoots Saren in the head a second time, triggering Sovereign to turn Saren's corpse into a frog that you must then shoot mindlessly for about three years in what is undoubtedly the most moronic boss battle of the century. Killing Saren's corpse makes Sovereign vulnerable for some reason, and the Normandy fires a shot that blows them up. But then a scary piece of Sovereign flies into the Citadel control tower, and maybe Shepard's dead, and oh no, somebody hold me! Just kidding. Obviously. Then Shepard says, I don't care. <laughs> and stares into the camera for a bit before the credits roll. And yet, as I sort of alluded to earlier, it's not all bad. There are some elements of Mass Effect that are redeemable. Some small-scale story elements with execution that isn't completely laughable. Mass Effect could have been saved, instead of its story being even more of a dissociated mashup than that of Wings of Liberty. Take the second part of the mission on Vermeer, for example. While only one of your squadmates receives orders to go on a mission alongside your own as opposed to just tagging along with you or hiding away in the Normandy, this helps establish a sense of scale to the operation, where you genuinely feel like important shit is going on despite not being able to see it on screen. The execution is pretty hit or miss, but fuck, at least it's something. Honestly, Mass Effect is the worst game I've played in a long while. I say this having played Deadly Fucking Premonition amongst other noteworthy titles in the last year or so. But this was to be expected. It wasn't my first rodeo with Mass Effect, and I had been made aware that this was the worst game of the trilogy, maybe of the series, depending on how bad Andromeda is. I'll figure that out when I get to that game, I guess. I have hope for the sequel, from my past experiences with it and from the opinions of most people who have played the two games. Maybe Mass Effect will be redeemed. I guess I'll find out eventually.